Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, want to cover a little bit of the trades I went over this morning and talk about some psychology and then we will just attach this video on to the end of the day with the normal MJ video. So I swung in a MedMen position overnight looking for the potential of continuation of hype into the news of Jeff Sessions. When I'm swing trading a position, I am normally doing it with less capital than day trading. When I am day trading, I am in absolute complete control. I'm sitting at my computer. I can react instantly to anything that happens when i'm swing trading i'm giving up some of that control anything can happen overnight whether it's news whether the overall market has any significant changes so because i'm giving away some control i'm using less capital to offset that extra risk of that position and of course the fact that it's an otc name of mmnff i'm going to be using even less capital than normal so this is a lesson on keeping your losses small and what that can do and how it can affect your entire trading day. So I started today first things first with a loss. I think it's my first losing trade in about eight days, and that's because I've been slowing down and taking about one trade per day. But I took a loss first thing on MedMen because we could see Canadian MJ was not seeing a higher open with its pre-market trading. So then we looked at USMJ and could see we didn't have a whole lot of follow through there as well. So I took the made the decision after the double top at 634 and 630 to take that loss first thing. So ended up with an eight cent loss. And my position size was the a normal round amount of shares that I use for CGC for my day trading. So for my MedMen position, it's the same amount of shares for my CGC position. And obviously it's a $6 stock compared to a $45 stock. So I was risking in terms of capital, it was about 15% of the total capital that I use on our standard day trade for CGC is what I was swinging. So I literally need to then make up eight cents on CGC to be break even on the day and completely offset my loss from that swing attempt on MedMen. So for CGC, first thing this morning, we had weakness and we had a sell off with a downtrend on the five minute time frame, lower highs and lower lows. So I'm looking for an entry to play the bounce after the initial sell off once the bell rings. So I had my buy order filled out and I was sitting there and I only need to push one button to get entered into that trade. And I'm patiently watching the bid in the ask and looking for a shift in momentum. So on the first minute, we dropped down. I could see selling pressure. The second minute, we broke 44 psychological support. So at this point, I'm getting close to my entry. I'm watching to see if we get one more last push down. So I'm looking at the bid in the ask. I see us bounce off 43.55. We very quickly make it right back to 44. So I'm now watching the range between the low of the day and 44 psychological. I can see that we've break 44. We don't get a lot of follow through. And then we faded back down close towards the low of the day. We maybe hit the 4370s or 80s and then we stopped and that's all the bears got. They couldn't hit a new low of the day and we headed back up to 44. As soon as I saw that new low of the day not coming, I market bought my position, ended up filling at 4405. Then from there on the way up, I scaled out half of my position with a 25 cent gain. That's a day maker for me if I lock in my whole position right there. But because we had bull momentum, I wanted to see what kind of follow through we could get. So I played it safe by locking in half of my position for the 25 cent gain. And then I ended up locking the second half of the position in and it ended up being the total of and actually I waited for the first test of 45. And as soon as 45 didn't break, I sold. So in the end, it ended up being a total with those two sales of a 45 cent gain. So I had an eight cent loss and a 45 cent gain. So my gains were literally over 700% more than my losses were. So that's keeping your losers small and letting your winners ride a little bit longer. And that's how I personally can stay one foot in front of the other and easily absorb small losses. From there, I did play another bounce on CGC. We dropped down, we hit 43.01. And actually, it was a, a bit of a failed trade. So let's go over this. I was looking at 
a, the two minute time frame, and I was looking for the potential of the equilibrium. So oftentimes we'll see an equilibrium at the start of the day because we have a wide range. We had the low of the day, the high of the bounce. I was looking for a two minute higher low compared to 43.55. So I made an entry at 43.80 and then we quickly faded down and broke that support. So just like that, the five minute RSI on CGC is right back to oversold. And I was watching for, at that point I needed to uh, have damage control on my trade, so to speak, because it didn't play out as I was anticipating. And normally I would just exit on that break of 43.55 and take that loss. But because the five minute RSI was at oversold, I wanted to play a little bit of a bounce. And I also looked at SPY as soon as that happened and SPY was on its way to the high of the day. So I thought that's only going to help a bounce as well. So my game plan from there was either to enter double down on my position on a break of 43 psychological and then my cost basis would drop significantly and I would look to ed exit break even on the trade. We never broke 43, so I never added to that position and I just patiently waited for the bounce. We ended up getting a bounce up to 44 and that was another one where I'm just looking to get out of that trade break even. Ended up with a seven cent win because I waited to see, could we break 44? As soon as we rejected from 44, I sold. It filled in the 4390s, which was, uh, by the time I filled, it was about a seven cent gain from my quote unquote failed trade. So that's a little bit of trade management in terms of getting out of a position that didn't play out the way that I wanted. So all in all, at the end of the day, I'm now up 52 cents, or I have made 52 cents and I lost eight cents. So I'm up 45 cents, 44 cents on the day. And I'm done for the day. That's all I need. That's good to go. That's the day maker. And that's a little bit more than a day maker. And the psychology of what goes on now is I could be looking at this chart and saying, oh man, if I just held, I'd have X amount of dollars and we made it all the way back to the high of the day. I don't think that at all. That thought does not even cross my brain. My thought process is very clear. I made my money. I ha executed my game plan. I hit the day maker and I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow with whatever setup that we get. So it's very important to have that kind of mindset because otherwise you're going to be sitting there second guessing yourself the whole time. Whereas what happens after I enter and exit my trade, if I'm executing my game plan, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, it's going to matter in terms of what the setup is for the next trade, but in terms of what I could have had or what could have been, it doesn't matter at all. And if you're going to do this consistently, you're going to have to be able to completely shake that off because again, we're not going to hit perfect trades. We're not going to nail the bottom and sell the top. All we can do is get our money in between day after day, one step forward in front of the other. That's all I'm looking to do. So we'll see how the rest of the day plays out. The bulls did recover a bit here. We're watching for an hourly equilibrium and watching for the potential of a bearish reversal head and shoulders pattern with the left shoulder head. If we bounce here instead of right shoulder, and then perhaps Friday, if we come down and break support, that will be the indication that daily consolidation is coming. But as of right now, pretty solid bounce. Hourly uptrend, still intact. Excuse me. And I will see you all this afternoon, and we'll see how this hourly chart updates over the next six or so hours. Another note, thanks everybody for your support of the Do Good Things movement. The clothing is flying off the shelves, but we got bombarded yesterday with a ton of orders. So I would expect a few weeks for those orders to get out. It's also on-demand printing, which means we don't have an inventory. The company just prints the orders as they get them, and then they get shipped out. So the shirts need to be made and then shipped out. So appreciate your patience waiting a few weeks to get those orders in. So now we're getting into the regular analysis. We're going to look at CGC, ACB, APHA, TLRY, CRON, NBEV, MedMen, IIPR, TGOD, HEXO, so we didn't get any follow through of hype and it's sometimes we get some slaps in the face as reminders to keep us in line as traders. Some people potentially going with too large a position into the end of the day swinging, looking for a home run. I have done that myself in certain scenarios. This was not one of them, fortunately, but a reminder nonetheless that that hype and news and momentum only delayed the inevitable. The inevitable being we know daily consolidation is coming. We know we're overextended. We started to get that consolidation yesterday. The news at the end of the day pushed us up even higher. There was no follow through on that news and all of MJ, US and Canadian alike had a bearish day today getting the pullback. So in yesterday's video, we talked about the weekly lower highs that we're looking for and we talked about hedging long-term positions. Well, that big upper wick that's currently forming, if that's how we're going to end the week, that's the potential of being our lower high and watching for the weekly tightening range from here. Now, just one day of a pullback is not enough to determine that, but that's the way that it is potentially shaping up. So from here, 
The bears are looking to take control for the short term. We close near the low of the day. It's a daily inside bar. So CGC, we're going to look at a bear break and to find the next support levels, we can look at the hourly time frame. Most important support level, and I do want to put extended hours on just to see some other levels that might miss, I might miss otherwise, but 4124 and then 3919 are the two clear support levels that are left right now in the short term. In the video that I posted earlier, or that's at the front of this video, I highlighted the potential of looking for the lower high and the right shoulder, and I speculated potentially seeing that tomorrow if it was going to play out with a nice right shoulder. The right shoulder was there. It was just a very, very small right shoulder. It was one hour of a bounce. We saw the bounce follow through. We broke the lower high each candlestick pattern from the morning pre-market trading and then quickly followed through and just four hours later hit that lower low. So the hourly uptrend was lost. We now have a, an hourly bear flag potentially forming and we might get a gap down open tomorrow. 41.24 will be what we're watching as support and the lower we drop from here, the more likely that our weekly lower high has been set. We're going to pull back and form a daily higher low because the last daily higher low was down at 35.87. So unless we see a complete collapse, we will look for the bulls to form a daily higher low. And what we're going to be watching for, for a confirmation that our weekly lower high has been set will be a change of the daily trend, which will be a higher low wherever we end up forming it. Let's just, for speculation's sake, say we bounce off 40. We see the bulls shift momentum reject from 44, and then drop down and break 40. That would be a lower high and a lower low that would lose the uptrend on this bounce, and that would clearly give us a weekly lower high on this pattern. So again, the midway point from this drop from 59 all the way down to, we'll call it 32 at the low, that is about an 850 move. That's about 40. We definitely got to the midway point here. So now we're watching to see where we stand in terms of how much pullback are we going to get and can the bulls form a weekly higher low to give us an equilibrium. Again, we were watching SPY for the exact same thing. The consolidation that started on SPY is very minimal at this point. You can see the weekly candlestick has nowhere near as much of an upper wick. So that tells us the consolidation that's going on in the MJ sector is more significant for the MJ sector than the market as a whole. So if the market were to begin to start pulling back the next couple days as well, that could potentially magnify the MJ pullback as well. Another potential reason that the sell-off was significant today is, yeah, we got rid of Sessions as the attorney general, but now Trump is indicating that Chris Christie might be his replacement, and he's worse. He is the New Jersey governor who was a huge thorn in the side of the voters' rights. The voters passed medical in NJ in New Jersey, and he did everything he could to stop it despite the will, the clear will of the voters. So the implementation of medical in New Jersey saw so many roadblocks and so many delays because he was very anti-MJ. And there's some quotes going around where, you know, now he's saying that he thinks it's up to states' rights, which would be great, but still, on the surface, he is worse than Sessions, and that's a possibility that may have shaken up, shook, shook up, shooken, may have shaken up the sector today in terms of, well, it's not all roses and, and rainbows here. Another thing, as I talked about in the hour-long intro to USMJ video, one of the things I said was the US business environment is not favorable. Companies have to dilute and sell shares in order to fund expansion, in order to fund their salaries, and in order to just generally operate. And here's just an example where Enbev, which is the producer of CBD beverages, they had news come out after hours. Of course, they're saving that bad news for after hours that they have dilution and shares coming out. So the close of the day was at, where are we? 469. And here we are after hours on that reaction, $4, a 15 plus percent pullback on that news. That is huge risk. And that's why long positions in the USMJ sector are so much more high risk, high reward than they are in the Canadian MJ sector because of this. So this right now, I mean, if you're in a long-term position and you lose 15% overnight, that is huge. And it doesn't, stop losses do not help you in terms of if, you know, if your stop loss was skipped because it happened after hours. So it's just something to be aware of that it is extremely high risk, high reward. And we're going to continue to see companies diluting shareholders to raise funds unless we get a more favorable environment with banks allowed to play ball. So again, very high risk because of that. 
And now NBEV is pulling back on the daily chart as well. ACB, inside bar on the daily, closed down at the low of the day. Pretty decent chunk of bear volume, especially for an inside bar today. But we're watching the hourly trend. We are consolidating. The most important support down here is 958. If the bulls can hold 958, they're still holding on pretty well overall. But if we lose 958, it's going to be clear that significant daily consolidation is coming. Again, keeping in mind that ACB has not formed any support on the daily time frame since the bottom at 725. So anything above 725 will give us a daily high or low. The best case scenario for the bulls is a bull flag of consolidation here just for a couple days and then continuation. So we have to be watching what the volume looks like. We have to be watching how much pullback we do get. Is there any dip buying going on? And we're going to take it one day at a time. The indication of these names that the daily higher low has been established is when the hourly trend changes back in favor of the bulls with a higher low and a higher high. So we're not close to that happening. The, the close down near the low of the day indicates that there's a potential for a gap down open tomorrow. And depending on the size of the gap down, I may look to play CGC just for a, an oversold bounce flip, just like I did this morning. But other than that, just patiently waiting for daily higher lows to be established. AP, or again, let's look at the weekly time frame on all these names. A little bit of an upper wick forming, not enough for us to be confident that the weekly lower high has been set. APHA, daily inside bar, close at the low of the day, same story. A little bit less volume comparative to the bull volume on the way up. Hourly support from here, key level down at 1654. And then another one down at 1603. And actually, we already broke 1654 right at the end of the day. So 1603 is the next key level. That's the consolidation that we had before the reaction to Jeff Sessions news yesterday after hours. So that's a key support level and the potential that we just, you know, give back all of that hype and momentum from that hour and 15 minutes of trading is certainly here right now. So 1603, key support, last hourly lower high, 1713 on any bounce attempt, anything under 1713 is just an hourly lower high. And same thing, how much daily consolidation are we going to see? Because we have not consolidated since 1237, which is why we were looking at the potential of weekly lower highs being set in the near term future and looking for potential hedging opportunities. Inside bar for TLRY, the harder you run, the harder you're going to pull back if you're not establishing supports on the way up. TLRY did not establish supports on the way up yesterday and gave it all back. Look at the move. We started at 109.19, didn't give it all back, but we gave the vast majority of it back with no supports established on the way up. Even the 15-minute chart hardly established support levels. We saw one bounce today and then it faded into the end of the day. A little bit of bull volume at the end of the day, but we're just going to stick to the hourly time frame. And at this point, an hourly equilibrium is the most likely scenario because of the range that we have forming here. So on any bounce that we see on TLRY, we're going to look for a lower high to form, perhaps in the low to mid 120s. And then we'll see if we drop down to a lower low. But essentially, we're watching a bit of a different close at the end of the day with that little bit of a lower wick. It's not significant, but it does stand out compared to what we saw with the low of the day close on everybody else. So if we bounce, we're going to look for a lower high on the hourly and the consolidation on the daily time frame here, same story. We did not form a clear daily higher low on the way up. We're looking for that higher low now. And this is the potential of our weekly lower high with the big long upper wick forming and cron. Cron on the daily time frame, inside bar, close near the low of the day. Everybody's doing the same thing. Hourly time frame, we've got supports breaking. Next support that we're watching is down here at 868. Bulls really want to hold that level. 868 and, and 872, almost a double low down here. So we're heading down towards those levels. On any bounce attempt, we don't have an hourly lower high compared to 995. So any bounce attempt, we will look for a lower high compared to that level. And again, the hourly trend change back to the bulls will tell us our daily higher low has formed, but there's no sign of that yet with the close near the low of the day. So NBEV talked about that bearish reaction. Support for NBEV is going to be down at 393. And this is the market pricing in additional shares being added. That's why you dump on dilution news, because it's essentially the market, or I should say the company telling you, hey, we're about to issue more shares. You know, those shares that you hold, they're now worth less of the company than they were just 12 hours ago. So... That's the market pricing in the extra shares, the extra supply of shares. And we're going to be watching to see if the bulls can hold that support level of 393. A setback with the weekly time frame. Again, not much of a bounce here. Potential for that being our lower high, but only one day of pullback. That's not enough information. MedMen is at a key support level as well. 
5157. I do believe the Canadian version did break this support. While it's a double bottom on the US version, I think Canada broke just below that level. But we're watching the double top and now the potential of a bear break. The four hour time frame shows us this tightening range, high, low, double top with the lower high, and we're right at support now. So if we show up tomorrow and break 551, look at the lack of support nearby to find the next support level. We're looking all the way down at 486. So we knew these USMJ names were extended on their daily timeframes, and we knew we needed higher lows. We got that higher low. We attempted continuation and we failed. We rejected and could not see that follow through. So now we're heading back and further consolidation is likely needed. The weekly time frame. Looking like our lower high and equilibrium is set. High, low of the pullback, lower high, and we're going to look for a higher low compared to 420. More and more of these MJ charts are just shaping up to stay in a tightening weekly range into the end of the year unless news changes that. And it's going to have to be significant news because that session news didn't change anything except for hourly charts. IIPR, we highlighted this one over the weekend for a clear tight range looking for a bull break. It followed through in a big way. I personally did not take this trade, and that's because the bull break did not occur during regular hours. On Monday, we opened higher above that level, and it was actually Tuesday. We opened above resistance of 4201. That in combination with IIPR being thinly traded, I just left it alone. We saw a significant bull move first thing. We gave it all back, and then significant follow through on increased bull volume today. So if you made an entry on the open on that break of 42, you're in, you know, in the mid 42s and the price now is up. I believe this was where we were looking for a target. There's resistance right here of 4604. I'm going to have to go back and watch the weekend video. 4604 and 4595 is a little double top, but I think we set that weekly target right around 44, $45. I think we said a 5% move would be fairly easy. So we're going to look for an equilibrium here as well. We're going to look for a lower high compared to the 4974 all time high. And we're going to look for this tightening equilibrium into the end of the year. And then we're going to look for a break of that equilibrium either early next year or right before the end of this year. So another setup, I mean, as a trader being all cash, I love these setups. Give me all the equilibriums you can. I will patiently either look to play the lower highs and play bearish, or I'll just patiently wait for these equilibriums to form and give me clear breaks with clarity and follow through to start the year. And that would be a great way to start the year with some nice clear patterns breaking. So we'll see if IIPR rejects from that double top on the daily tomorrow. If we do, we'll look for some healthy consolidation. TGOD also looking for a daily higher low. Declining bear volume is a good sign. Key support is 401 right now. And if we break 401, there is a lack of support nearby. After 401, we're looking down at 340. So ideal scenario is for the bulls to hold that level. That would keep them extremely strong on this daily bounce if they can hold 401. Resistance is 437 and 460. We have clear hourly lower highs to be watching. Change the hourly trend and we'll say our daily higher low has been established. Keep in mind to confirm this daily trend change, this bull move was not enough. It broke some resistance levels, but we need the higher low and then continuation move to confirm the trend change is underway. So weekly time frame, big bullish reversal candlestick, but an upper wick now on this week's candlestick. And we will need that daily higher low and higher high follow through. And 401 is a very important level for the rest of forever, at least in the short term, the next couple days. HEXO, close at the low of the day, daily inside bar, but right up on that support level. So we look at the hourly time frame to find our next supports. It's down at 668, which is being tested, and then 657. And the bulls really want to hold 657 because 641 is after that. Daily consolidation, we were very overextended. Anything above 505 is a daily higher low. But we need to consolidate on the daily. We need to establish a higher low. We need to see the hourly bulls change the trend back in their favor. And we'll see if we can get continuation from there. But upper wicks are forming. The bounce was overextended. And it's it's fun to watch chat rooms or uh, Facebook groups and Reddit and just see the sentiment. You can see bears getting cocky and calling the bottom when the market was collapsing just two weeks ago and Canadian MJ's collapsing and all the bear articles marking the bottom. And then now the bulls came out just yesterday talking about where are the bears? The bounce is great. The bulls are back in control, pretty much marking the temporary top yet again. So you can see it. It's very interesting because what we're seeing on these charts is human emotion just in you know pictorial form with data points, but you can see it in social media interactions as well. And it's like, oh, that's, that's that euphoria that we're seeing on the chart right now with the daily chart being overextended and the clear need for daily consolidation approaching. So it's always fascinating out there. That's what we got. 
position sizing. That was the lesson today for me to be able to take that loss, which was over a 1% loss on uh, MedMen first thing and to have it not impact the day hardly at all because it was such a small position comparative to what I day trade with. That was a, a big lesson and a reminder for me to keep my swing position small and to keep my longer position small because of the lack of control comparative to day trading. So I hope you're all well out there. I hope you do some good things and we will see you. I'm traveling this weekend, heading back to North Carolina. I'll try and get videos out. Not sure I'm going to get those three videos out like I did this previous weekend, but maybe we'll com combine like we did today. See you then.